Hello, everybody. This is Purge bringing you first person replay commentary of an a bad end game. Ah, I hate saying that, but I think it's that. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about. It. Okay. So I was going to do a let's look at losses video today, and I looked through the first replay, and everything looked fine. Couple major points to make. I made like I don't know seven notes or something like that, and then I started going over this game, which I was just gonna like like chop up into little pieces and to make into a small video, put with the other animal lost. And then I was approaching somewhere near one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven notes, and I was like, God, every fight here is really fun to watch. There was so much fighting in this game, so I was like, I can't just like segment this video up and not make it into a full video because I think the game is pretty fun to watch. Um, it was it was pretty fun to play at least. I was um I didn't play super well, but I think it's a really fun game to watch, so I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a, a bad end game. Uh, I haven't made a video of a bad end since July, apparently. I might still say Abaddon. Abad. Abaddon. There are two Ds. <sighs> Anyways. Abaddon is, is uh, not necessarily top tier pick right now, but he can be kind of useful, depending on the lane matchups. Um, and I can talk a ton about that this game, and boy will I. Um... But basically, he's a hero who heals and shields his allies, and that is his primary role by far. He's basically a walking Omni Knight in a sort of sense, and it was kind of funny because I played a lot of heal heroes this uh, this night. Uh, this was the last night, I believe, that I played these, and this was at the end of a four-hour string of playing, and I hadn't eaten very much, so I wasn't feeling super well and playing super well. So that's my excuse for my mistakes, but... Um, He's very good for healing and buffing his allies. He's not very good offensively. His offensive damage is very, very low, especially in the early game. But his ability to save allies is really huge. And I've talked about this in other games where I have healing heroes, but Prepare heals are so powerful because they very rarely exist in the game at all. The uh, few heals that do exist are things like mech or wand. Those are the common ones. You have something like a bottle, but it doesn't really like a burst and it doesn't go through uh, damage. And then you have stuff like bloodstone which is obscure and pretty much not necessary uh, to be talked about. Um, you could argue that pipe is similar to a heal sort of a thing as well. But basically what heals allow you to do is they allow you to swing fights a lot. And this is one of my main complaints with a game like League of Legends, is because in a game like League, almost every hero has some sort of shield or heal or ally heal or something. I mean, I haven't played League that much, but just by watching and playing a couple games, I noticed that a lot of people had shields. And it's very common... I think it's a bad game design mechanic because when it comes down to someone, if you have two units and they both have fairly low HP, but they're both offset by the fact that they both have shields and heals, World of Warcraft is very similar to this as well. It, it turns into this like burst healing thing where like to kill your opponent, you have to kill them before they can react or shield or heal or whatever. And generally it makes for a bit of a bad game. Um, in Dota, these heals and things are very, very limited. Like, there's very few heroes that can heal allies and things like that. I don't... Oh, I'm thinking of a different game. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I thought I dewarded that, and that was the other game. Um, but heals are very, very uncommon in a game like Dota, just because it, it makes the game a little bit harder to predict. Like, for example, you jump in on a hero, and you're like, okay, I can kill this hero, it's a lion. You blow up lion, but halfway through blowing him up, an Abaddon or an Abaddon shows up and heals him and shields him. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to kill that guy. So it, like, changes your perceptions of the game, and it makes them a little weird, basically. So it's like... E it, it's not as obvious about whether or not you're going to be able to get a kill, which is one of my problems with um, that kind of game design. Um, I, I just think it's a little a little weird because it makes fights a little weird, and this is a lot of the reason that people really hate playing against Abaddon is because he can save allies and things like that. So, um, yeah, I grabbed a DD at the start of the game. I'm just contesting the Pudge here because I want to make sure the Lion gets free farm. Um, he probably was going to get just about free farm anyways, but um, I just wanted to make sure I had a DD so I could do this. If I didn't have a DD, he wouldn't really care about this because it's like, what am I going to do? Run up and right click him. With only 60 damage, he would hit me just as hard back, etc., etc. So, um, this was fine for me to do, I think. I grabbed a DD, it was, it was all okay. The problem is that um, this means that Mar our safe lane isn't going to be as strong at the start of the game. And by the way, I'm going to talk way more about game theory this game than about how to play Abaddon, because Abaddon is very little, very low skill cap. You basically just death pulse and shield your allies when they're in trouble. That's about it. That's pretty much your whole game. Have fun. Um, but I really want to talk a ton about skill theory, or about theory and. Um, how to play the hero or like how where to be when you're playing the hero is probably a better question to ask but our safe lane is a phantom assassin with a rubik 
Both heroes have fairly low damage early on. Um, Rubik gets okay-ish at 3, but pre-3, Rubik has pretty crap damage. And we're against a Tuscar and a Weaver. Weaver is going to be pretty much unkillable, but we could kill the Tuscar. So that's going to be the hero that we're looking to go on when we do actually go for kills. Um, I'm going to be doing a pull through here. I was a little greedy and I went for the first last hit. And usually you don't want to do this, but it's actually going to be... A, no, the greedy part was actually sticking around for the EXP on the second creep. That was a mistake. Because this means that my pull is going to be a little bit late. And I might miss some of the creeps when I go for the pull through. So pull the creeps over. I actually end up getting lucky and I got two of the three creeps. Um, I watched the replay about DK's death. It was just a mistake by him, actually. It wasn't actually the Bane setting up the sleep hook. hook the Bane sleep hook combo which is really scary if you're ever playing against a bane and a pudge it is the worst because he'll just sleep you and then the pudge is the easiest hook ever and then he should be able to hook you and get you in rot distance especially with a line who doesn't have an escape not getting hooked is basically his entire point as a hero he really needs to not get hooked so anyways my pull through could have been a bit better would have been one more creep denied and uh, possibly enough creeps to be able to take out the enemy hero throwing a lot of nukes on the uh Tuscar here and I drop a sentry down, but our chances of killing these heroes is just simply, it's its just not going to happen really. I was able to do some good damage with my shield, but from here we have to back up, so nothing really major happens here. I'm just going to pop myself and maybe should have just tangoed up instead of salving. I'm a little unsure, but um, yeah, it looks like I did waste a little salve HP, so, and also salves are a bit better during crucial team fights and things, so maybe I should have just tangoed slowly. It's hard to say, but, but basically, um, this looks really bad for DK, and this is this is where he does die to the hook combo the first time. So, it's really, really frustrating to play against this. And this is the first time where I maybe said, like, I need to cover the mid lane. So, I was sitting top. We didn't really accomplish that much, so I said, okay, I guess I have to sit mid, because the Bane is pressuring him mid. So, I thought, okay, well, I guess I have to camp mid now. So, I basically have to camp mid in the assumption that Bane is going to TP here, and he's going to sleep DK, and then DK will get hooked, and then DK is going to have a bad time. So I kind of thought that I had to sit here. Um, another solution to this would maybe be just picking up a TP scroll and sitting top. And I maybe should have done this instead. Um, I was really, really hesitant to spend money in the early game this game. Um, I was really scared to do it, honestly. Uh, and the main reason was because I wanted to get Arcane Boots or Bottle or whatever. Because I need some kind of mana and HP regen so that I can continue to spam disables or heals and shields. That's the best way to say that for sure, heals and shields. It's really, really useful to have... Um, the nukes to be able to do that. Um, I did know that Bane grabbed the invis here, so I was just going to go hide. I figured the initiation would come very shortly. If you guys don't know how Abadad Abaddon's... <laughs> I try to say both at the same time there. If you don't know how his abilities work, his first skill is a heal that self-damages. You can also use it as a ranged nuke. And his second skill removes negative debuffs and pro provides a damage block. So my job is walk in, heals, and shields, and mission is accomplished. So there we go. I saved DK. He probably would have died otherwise, but I did stay in mid for a bit. I'm a little surprised they went on that because they did have a ward over there on the high ground, but they probably knew I was there, but we still ended up preventing the kill. So, um, first item that I kind of wanted to buy was going to be a boots. So I think I bought a boots now, and things should be a bit better. So yeah, if I didn't go mid, then DK was going to get constantly killed by that combo, and he was going to probably have a pretty bad time. So I also purchased two ironwood branches because I wanted to get my int and my HP up a bit more. I maybe should have bought consumables instead, like a clarity potion. Might have done a lot more than just two ironwood branches. But but either way, I'm kind of just hoping that they try to go for a kill on him mid, and then I can turn things around and it goes well. The downside for Abaddon or Abaddon, when you do play support like this, though, you're basically playing a complete support role. You have no chance of farming. And you have very little disable, so it's actually kind of hard to gank. You're, you're basically, like, the only thing that you can do in terms of ganking as a hero is you just force them to commit to you, and then you turn the fight around and end up getting kills from it. But this is only successful if they go aggressive. So the last minute that I just sat mid here, I've gotten a level, okay, whatever. But I haven't saved anybody. Like, what if I was top, for example, and I was there when the Phantom Assassin got ganked? then I would have been able to maybe keep PA alive enough for her to get a kill or something. We end up, He ends up solo killing Pudge anyways. This is good. I gave him enough uh, cover, so to speak, so that he could get to 6, and then now he can deal with the Pudge just fine. So this is good. But the problem was I sat mid because I was worried about the Bane, and then Bane, after unsuccessfully ganking mid, he just went top and got a kill on our other hero. So it kind of made us just run around the map a lot, which is really, really frustrating to deal with. Just ran past a, uh, a Bane over here. Apparently that doesn't do invisible units because that appeared to not hit them. I'm still having a bit of trouble with my, my mouse this game, but again, just going to try to throw nukes on the Rubik. And now I'm completely out of mana, so I'm kind of limited. 
Keep in mind, we do have a Fury on this game, guys. He popped a wand right before the tower hit, so he's going to end up surviving. And luckily for us, the hook ended up missing the PA because the Weaver is in the way. Our Prof had just TP'd in. He has approximately 300 HP because he was trying to kill the Bane, but the Bane did a TP out. So Prophet is going to just die. I looked down and I was like, what is this guy doing here? I was really confused. Um, but just to keep things in perspective, our Prophet made a huge mistake in the early game. Like, a really big mistake. Um, if we take a look at the uh, hero level, our Prophet is at level 5 and the Invoker is at level 8. So he got... Massively outlaned. And basically what happened was, I, this is really important to go over because I just want to like clarify why we're having a lot of trouble right now. He went to the bot lane and the Bane swung around him and just attacked him like six times as the Prophet ran away. He didn't even trade. And he didn't bring HP regen to lane either. So basically he got to the lane at level one and he got contested out and then he just left. This was really lucky for us that the uh, hook damage was blocked by the Nightmare, but unfortunately I didn't have a TP scroll, so I couldn't go cover him there. So, he ends up dying anyways. Um, this is uh, another big mistake. Uh, Alright, anyways, the Prophet got right clicked down to half HP and he just left the lane. He literally went to the lane as level 1, he got 0 EXP and he left, and he went to the jungle. And then the Bane left and then he roamed mid. That's why the Bane roamed mid, because the Prophet wasn't there, for example. So there, there wouldn't have been as much pressure on the line if the Prophet actually sat bot. So the Prophet could have got a better item build. That would have made things uh, a big advantage. And you could have played better as well. So anyways, I didn't buy a TP scroll because I'm stupid. And I was really trying to save up for like an Arcane Boots or something like that. But we weren't doing well, so trying to save up for big items is usually not worth it. Another really good item pickup as an early Abaddon or Abaddon is just to buy a Magic Stick. Because the HP is good, you're going to need it when you're Death Pulsing your allies. And the Mana Pool is also very good because it'll, you'll be able to cast more spells. But this is the skill build that this I always go top. on a bad end. I think it's the best, the 2-2 two -two build for by level 4. By level 6, you usually have 3 Mist Coils and 2 Aphotic Shields. Isn't always the case, but uh, oftentimes is. And there's a bunch of action going on top. I, the reason I was sitting mid is because I was so EXP starved, but again, I don't have a TP scroll, so I'm not going to be able to TP on this, and I really should have one. So this is like two cases where I probably could have used Radiant's a TP. This one, tower. way more than the previous one. There's a lot of action. If I was there, I could have healed the PA. I could have shielded the PA. We got a kill out of it. And in fact, I'm going to be able to scare the, the Tuskar to the right. But um, it was a pretty big mistake for me not to have a TP, even still. I don't know if I was just like, eh, whatever, I missed the kill. I mean, we got a kill out of the Tuskar. But I could have saved the PA maybe, and he would have been doing a lot better. If you're curious about items, we can check those out. But PA is going for a... Midas Rush, in case you were wondering. He start, He went for a Boots, he got a TP scroll, and now I'm in trouble. There we go. So I ended up getting killed. They actually had a ward over there, which I assumed... Uh, no, I didn't assume that yet, I don't think. Later I assumed that. We can talk about that later, though. But I got hooked and I got killed. This is a fair kill by the Pudge. Nice hook by him. Anyways, I'm really close to Arcanes now, so I'm like, oh, I'll just save all the way for Arcanes. It'll be fine, guys. Once I get Arcanes, things are going to be okay. But it's not really like that. Like... Getting arcanes isn't really what solves your problem as an Abaddon. It's it's like you need both HP regen and you need mana regen, so it's not always the best. Oh yeah, I should probably close this. Oh yeah, our, our, their Weaver ended up dying here. Keep in mind that's their only carry. The Weaver is the only hero on their team that can really carry more or less. Uh, Invoker can get a lot of items, but he's not going to carry. Unless he goes for some crazy right-click DPS build, which he does not this game. So now I'm kind of back to the old method. I say, okay, I want to finish my arcane boots, I want to get EXP, I want to save my allies, but I don't really have an option to do that, so I'm kind of just running around the jungle aimlessly, which isn't really worth my time. I dare say I should have sat top and covered the PA, um, which appears to be what I'm uh, about to do right now. I was thinking about pulling, and we wanted to close in on this Tuskar if possible, so I was waiting for the Rubik a bit, and now we should be able to draw over and grab him. So immediately, as soon as we got into a bot position to gank him, it seemed very obvious that they did have a ward, so I'm going to drop a sentry here. And this is probably one of the bigger mistakes that I made this game. Because my sentry ward is just slightly out of range of a v observer ward. It's pretty close, but not extremely close. And I should have placed it about here. I should be placing the ward about here. Especially when Pudge hooked me here, it was no doubt in my mind that they ended up having a ward. Because that was his reaction time was way too fast. He also had a DD there, which meant that I wasn't even able to self-sacrifice. Um, and throw the death coil or the mist coil before I died. So it was really unfortunate for me. But I missed the observer ward, which led to my kill, which led to their map control, and now they're going to appropriately dive, most likely. So really sucked for me. I still didn't buy a TP scroll. I probably should have again. This is like the game of buy TP scrolls, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments being like, Purge, why did you buy a TP scroll? I don't know. I just didn't. It didn't happen. I really wanted an item, and it was wrong. It was the wrong choice, and it's frustrating to watch, and I know that. 
But anyways, I just want to talk about that. So, so yeah, now that they have that observer ward down, we didn't deward it. This really makes our the rest of our game pretty scary. Um, I want to talk about Midas as well, though, so we can t we can do that later. But oh, yeah, look at that. They got another kill on our heroes just because their map control is really good. And we still haven't killed their ward, and we don't even feel safe in our own jungle. Do not go Midas first if you're having a bad time, or if your lane is contested. If you're having a bad time, going to Midas, yeah, it might catch you up, but it means your laning stage is going to suck. The best way to catch up without having to buy a freaking Midas is just to kill your opponents and not die. And Midas doesn't really do that. It's like, you spend your first 1900 gold or, or somewhere in there just to grab an item that gives you more attack speed. And sure, it's great to jungle and kills big creeps and gives you a lot of experience, but it's just simply not worth it, honestly. Really, really not worth it. Especially against a dual lane. If, if the PA just would have gotten a phase boots instead, for example, he would hit for an extra 24 damage in the early game. He would have had a lot more movement speed. He maybe could have juked better or escaped more. It just would have made a big difference, I promise. Um, an early phase boots is a huge deal. Especially if you look at the team matchups. We have a Prophet and we have a Phantom Assassin. There's no way we're going to lose this late game. If we just get to the late game with about an average semi-okay advantage, or if we're about even, eventually we will win because the PA is going to outcarry their opponent or our opponents so so as a result of me not dewarding that ward we lost our rubik attack. we lost map control and now they take a tower Dyer's which is the first tower, tower lost in the game we really couldn't defend that one it just simply couldn't happen again i don't have a tp scroll because i spent all of my money on an arcane boots which is uh, possibly going to be an issue so we lose a rubik that was almost a fiend skip right there and again i'm not in the place where i wish i was which was actually on the top lane it's like a uh, line is about to survive, but he gets gripped. <laughs> do a prophet, do it. Prophet, you did it. Dyer's middle tower hey guys, I'm finally to the fight. Attack. Ran across the entire map. And now we can maybe kill a... Nope. He's just gonna run away. So he TP's out. I was able to save the prophet at least, which was good. In the meantime, 420, Weed Wizard 420 is farming like crazy. And finally, I had enough money to buy a TP attack. scroll. I was pretty happy about this. I was like, hey, TP. And I saw the Weaver, and I just wasn't concerned at all. I was like, oh, it's a Weaver. That guy's not going to kill me. That guy spent way too much time trying to get kills, and he should have spent a lot more time farming. I believe he went for a Midas as well, but he did it without getting any HP regen items, which is why the Lion was able to kill him once. So... So now that I have a TP, I gotta save that to save my allies. If I see anybody getting hooked or getting ganked, and in fact, there's one hero dead. Rubik gets hooked on the top lane again. We still don't have very good map control up there. I think this is partially because of the wards that were placed. Um, I didn't place the wards because I was saving for arcane boots and not TPs, but I think our Rubik placed the wards, and they're both on the rune spots here. So we got one sitting over here by the by the um, river. And the other one in the other spot of the river. And this covers the mid lane really well. But all of the action has been in this area of the map. So maybe placing a ward somewhere over here or here or here or up here would have been a lot more useful. Because we would have been able to spot our enemies going in our jungle. And maybe we would have lost those people that way. So that could have been very useful, I dare say. Should have been checking his items because I did not see him place the observer ward down there. We wizard in a super uber battle. Does end up getting killed. That was a pretty big kill. Invoker, I believe, has uh, quite a few kills. Oh my god, the Bane is 8 and 0. Holy shit. That guy played really well this game, honestly. I think he was definitely one of their best players, but he roamed so well. Like, he first contested the Prophet, and then he ganked mid a bunch, and then he did some top ganks. 8 and 0. Like, holy crap. Really, really well played by that guy. I didn't even realize he was 8 and 0. That's ridiculous. Gold per minute is quite up there as well, considering he's a hard support. He's been a roaming support, Radiant's and he's got that much farm. It's amazing. Attack. Well, there's the net worth. Profit way ahead of everybody else. Um, I'm sorry, our invoker is. Profit is second. He's finally catching up a bit. He did go for a Midas, I think. Yep, going for a Midas Shadowblade before treads. This is this is an older Prophet build. It's argued not to be the best one right now, but it kind of depends. A Necro 3 actually been, would have been really nice this game because they have a Weaver. And since nobody was here at first, I can go mid and grab some EXP. Saw the hook coming, very obvious, so just dodged that one up. And since he hooked that, I don't know why, but I thought that he had an Om Sword. You can actually shield off the uh, Nightmare. Oh, 
This is basically where Abaddon Radiant's starts being really, really useful. In the mid game, there's a lot of disables that you can just remove uh, because of the shield. Again, I haven't explained this very well, but the shield does stop disables that are casted on your ally. So if your ally gets roared, if he gets stunned, if he gets slept, you can cast the shield on him, it removes the negative debuffs, and then it blocks spell damage or physical damage for the next period of time. And if it, the shield is broken, it does damage. We did get a blink dagger on DK now, so we called to be aggressive. And we're going to start things off with a dead punch, which is really good for us. I hit 6 from that too, so I finally caught up heavily in EXP. Punch bot back, but we should be able to fight this. Shield the Prophet. That was a Fiend script that I just completely cancelled, by the way. This is a really big mistake that I, that I lost from a save. I was able to kill the Pudge after the fact, but... But they're just going to kind of rip through us at this point. It was really important that I keep all of my allies alive, especially Lion, because he has so many disables. But I wasn't able to do that, unfortunately. It's a good Sunstrike attempt. He would have lived, though, I think. The Sunstrike at that point only did 400 damage, and he had a shield as well as uh, 300 HP, so he would have lived, for sure. But my mistake was not healing or covering the line. He was taking rot damage while he was mana draining, and I didn't really feel very threatened by that. But his HP pool was very low early on, and the Pudge very obviously was just going to hook after getting stunned, so... Especially when the uh, when the line was not moving, so I should have anticipated that if I could have gotten a heal off or maybe save line, it could have taken some pressure off of our other heroes. But I, d I was forced to shield the the prophet instead because he did get fiend script. So I don't know things happen. We're gonna get a kill out of it at least, but I'm gonna have to TP for this one because it looks like they're gonna get ganked. And it all kind of worked out anyways. Just like so much action this game. There was a lot. Blocked a bit of that damage. The Ring of Regen is picked up as well, just to get my HP regen up. It's going to be really tough to take this tower. We did spot the Pudge over there, so basically contesting the tower is not going to happen, but we can maybe cover the tier 2. And if you guys want to see how close we are, uh, we can check gold graphs. They're actually pretty moderately ahead of us, about 5k, and a decent amount of EXP. They're also, they also nightmared me here, because that way if they fight, I won't be able to heal and shield allies. So... This is like the latest disable ever, or save. I really messed up on that save as well. I really should have been able to save that guy. I, I don't know why, I was just looking somewhere else or something. That was really close. If I got hooked there, I would have died 100%. Radiance top tower is under attack. I try to do damage there with the shield. If you resummon the shield on the same person, it'll just explode and do the new. It's really good. And that is a dead hero, so... I did miss my missed coil, but he was going to die no matter what. So, don't even feel bad. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So basically, playing Abaddon is... Mostly about just dancing around and waiting until the time to heal and shield your allies. They're going to be able to take the Dyer's tier 2 mid because of this, because they got another attack. kill. And they Dyer's still have a lot more farm than us, so... Has fallen. Not too surprising. This is one of the times where a Midas does very little for you, because you just have a phase in a Midas. That could have been like a Vlad's or something instead, you know? Or even not a Vlad's, but like, what about a drum? Like, a drum with a phase gives you a lot more offensive opportunity. And we also would have had a lot more movement speed, so... Regeneration. Something like a drum would have made a huge difference over the course of a Vlad's. I thought it was an official rage quit, by the way. He told us, he told us, he's like, I've had enough of this game, and then he just left. So I was like, alright, well, I guess he's he's quitting. And then he, uh, spoiler alert, he joins again a second later. He was just restarting his Dota, which he does sometimes, so. Got a Fiend's Grip over here. On a support. I was telling him to run towards me, but he didn't do that. And there he just died from the urn, so I was pretty annoyed by that, but whatever. We get a kill out of it, Pudge Dine is really good, and we're gonna also kill the Bane. That was a thousand gold, his monster kill streak finally uh, ended there. So what is he, like 9 and 1 or something ridiculous, 8 and 1. 
So, um, from here, we really need to take control of the game and getting observer wards up. Get, getting observer wards up is yeah, so that right is is one of the really Radiant's good ways to do this. Um, it probably should attack. be Rubik buying these, but Dyer's top tower whatever. I'm pretty attack. far away from my mech still, so I'm not too worried about this. I can definitely still uh, try to get some map vision up. Radiance middle tower is under attack. In the meantime, I'll stack ancient camps. PA can definitely kill those later, especially if she gets some life steal. And DK is going to be working towards a negative scepter Radiance next. Radiance middle tower is under attack. We'll see hero levels. Wow. So we're basically really far behind. I mean, our, our hard carry is level 11. Third lowest from the bottom, although it is tied with a lot. But our supports are in a lot of trouble as well. Myself as well as the Rubik are still quite low level. Getting a bad end to level 9 really quickly is actually really useful anyways. Um, I was invisible here, so I was going to go do some scouting and possibly look for some heroes. I didn't spot the invoker there. And I'm Get queuing up right. items to buy. As we see DK in some trouble. Luckily for us, the Prophet's paying attention. But unluckily for us, the uh, the Invoker was sitting right there. So I was unable to save the line. And Cold Snap is going to prevent me from casting anything. So we end up getting killed. Everybody dies, or two people die. Prophet ends up surviving. We lost two there and we weren't able to get a kill. I thought for sure we were, I was going to easily be able to kill the Pudge. I was like, oh, I can turn this around. This is a perfect example of what Abaddon's really good for. If a Pudge initiates on somebody and he assumes he's solo, all of a sudden I can stop the Dismember and I can heal. It's basically like a 450 HP swing on a hero that's taking a nuke. And at that point, if we didn't get chain stunned or double blasted by the Invoker, we would have easily gotten that kill. He also had a Refresher, which is ridiculous. It's like 23 minutes. He went um, phase... Midas into Refresher with a point booster, I think. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I've never seen somebody rush so hard for a Refresher before. I guess it could hypothetically do some cool stuff, like you could do a double sun strike on somebody on the map every 180 seconds, which is actually a lot of damage. It's like a thousand pure. It's a huge nuke. It's like a Lion ulti global, but it was really good with double deafening and blast as well. It was honestly not a bad, not a bad strat. So killed all three of us, or at least two of us. Prophet barely survived. I don't know why Tuscar is here, but Tuscar is here. I think the only reason he decided not to kill me was because uh, I it's really hard to kill me because of my ulti. So we just spotted him, and then we realized that they were sitting right by our uh, right by our base. So again, since we're very far behind, we definitely need to try to take fights if we can, but but preferably when they're only high ground or adv advantageous for us. So I thought there was a good chance since they were over there that they had dropped a high ground ward, so I dropped a sentry just to make sure because I I really felt like. If they dropped a high ground ward and they hooked somebody down, we were just going to die. Unfortunately for us, DK got out of position. He wanted to go in there, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Need to go get some heals on the PA. Unfortunately, I'm a bit late here, and he looks likely dead. He is going to die. Radiance top tower is under attack. I did end up popping my ulti accidentally by uh, borrow timing there. And now we will fight the Weaver. Unfortunately, he ends up sprouting myself and not the Weaver. Dyer's middle tower is under if he would have sprouted that Weaver, Weaver would have died. Weaver doesn't have his ulti. He would have killed him. So, I honestly think our Prophet was kind of the weak link this game. Um, I did make a lot of mistakes not TPing, but he's not pulling his weight. I don't think. I wasn't quite sure where the Weaver was, so I thought I'd go check to see Dyer's if he was still here. Is he is long attack. gone, though. So, now they have a really good shot of just taking our mid-racks, uh, because Dyer's they want to fight. Tower has fallen. Oh. Boy, I thought that guy was really dead, so I just didn't even bother. Phantom. Alright, we got Pudge as well, so that's two heroes. Uh, and we got Tuscar, so that was really good. We got three heroes out of that. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So we just Radiant's got two towers, by the way. That was such fallen. a big gold boost. That was like 500 gold or something. And this really should close things up a lot more. 
I mean, this this gold disadvantage is ridiculous. It's very, very hard to come back from 10,000 gold. But the EXP drop alone is huge. I went from, like, I think I was, like, about level 8 or 9, maybe, as that fight started. Now I'm level 11. So my ulti lasts a little longer. I've got a Frostmourne, which is really good at chasing. Sometimes it is worth it to grab an early level of Frostmourne, by the way. Or Curse of Avernus. Just because it gives yourself 15 movement speed bonus. Oops, I should probably close this. But Nature's Prophet being ganked. Sun strikes slightly off course, and, uh... They did have a sentry, but he's going to be able to get away. So at this point, I have another heal to my arsenal. I have mech as well, which is really useful. And Pudge is going to get killed. But basically, if I really need to burst heal somebody, I can. I can just pop um, heal shield and mech. So that means I, I go from having about 400 HP or 450 nuke or heal to a 800. Is that 5? No, 700. 700. So 450 to 700 heal burst on one target, which is potentially massive. Especially if it's a hard carry, for example. If a hard carry hops in and they have a lot of items, it can really make a big difference. RPA made a lot of mistakes, though, I think. His uh, skill build was garbage. He went 2-1-4. He got four levels. I should have just TP'd out here, by the way. That was a really big mistake by me. We were able to stabilize, though, at least. Oh, we got Bane as well. That was actually not too bad. But I think that was a mistake. Four twenty the weed lizard. Four twenty. The weed wizard. Sorry. He's trying really hard to save DK here. And then I was gonna end up dying. So, mistakes they made there. I saw them, that they were running mid, and I assumed that they had seen me coming towards them. So I tried to metagame them and go the opposite way. And then I ran into them because they didn't actually mean to push, so that just really sucked. But it's one of the... You guys can really see how survivable a bad is. Like, if you get cut out of position, it still doesn't have to end up being horrible. The biggest loss there was honestly losing my ulti without my allies being able to cover me. Because if, if that fight would have resumed as normal with us maybe killing the Bane, I would have been able to survive for a couple more seconds. Maybe I wouldn't have died. It's hard to say, but getting hooked there was just so garbage. That was, I was really sad about that. It really messed us up. I don't know if he bought back for that as well. It doesn't appear so, but it really did hurt us a lot losing the, the PA right there. He had a lot of trouble keeping his farm up after he died so many times. I mean, his hero level is what, level 14? He's one of the lower levels on our team other than the supports. His net worth is really, really low. At least we have a Prophet. Prophet will be able to uh, split push this most likely. Alright, and now I have to decide what to do with items. Uh, we have decent ward coverage at the moment. Uh, a Radiant's lot of wards covering our side of the map. They're actually attack. taking Roshan right now, but we didn't know that. We wouldn't be able to contest them anyways, so... Uh, I guess we could have, because their whole team wasn't there, but we didn't know that either, I guess. This looks bad for DK. He is just gonna die. I don't know why I thought there was a ward. Did they throw a hook? Can't remember. I don't know why I thought there was a ward there, but I assume there was a ward. Then we saw a punch. I was really scared to go in here. I did pop the mech, I believe. Alright, Pia is going to come to the fight. Whenever your ulti goes off, make sure you use a, a mist coil though. So it'll give you a full heal. The force staff was possibly a mistake. We ended up getting him, so there we go. Finally, that is what my hero is supposed to do, guys. That's what is supposed to happen. You heal and shield your carries and your carry yolos it and kills the enemy carry. That's what's supposed to happen consistently. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's beautiful. 
and that Dyer's is a perfect demonstration of what happens. So attack. let's take a look at the graphs and see how the game is going. Up and down, up and down, and gold graph is peaking off a bit. So we're getting closer based on a percentage. So I've got about 1,500 gold now. Uh, major items for an Abaddon or an Abaddon after Mech and Wand, which I think are absolutely core pretty much. You need some kind of heal, I think, um, whether that's main Urn or a Mech. But I go, I like Mech, Mech Arcane Wand, something like that is very good. Um, other than that, you can do Force Staff. Uh, if you're really... Alright, Force Staff, Ghost Scepter is not bad. Ghost Scepter is pretty good against Weaver sometimes. Um... He's really the only hero on the Radiant team that I have to worry about right-click damage from. He's kind of It's kind of good against Forge Spirits as well, because it'll stop them from hitting you. Um, but yeah, Ghost Scepter, Force Staff. This game, I'll talk about it later, it's not important now. I don't know why Lion was here, but he was. He just... He got that Aegis, guys. I don't know why Bane had Aegis. I really don't. But we killed it. So we killed the Aegis. DK, he tilted a lot last night, by the way. So this may explain some of his extreme YOLO plays, but he was like hella tilted. But boy, did he get that kill. Actually, take a lot of creep damage. Surprisingly, my armor is really not that high in the hero. Baton's actually really good against magic nukes, I dare say. A lot more than physical damage. His armor's pretty low, but um, obviously... Uh, borrowed Time, his ulti, is really nice for healing and stuff. So you can usually keep pretty full HP. Magic nukes are oftentimes the best. Because they're less controllable than uh, right clicks. I feel like if you have a, a, a very right click heavy lineup, you just tap him below 400, Dyer's he pops his ulti, and then you just chase attack. him for a bit. Which guys like my last hit. So yeah, the, uh, the scaling on Curse of Avernus is really not very good. The bonus movement speed being 15% all levels is really strong, though. And that's pretty much the only reason I would advocate getting um, a point early. I'm not, I have no idea what they were talking about this time. Uh, we can do an item check on our PA and stuff. He has an armlet, phase, and a basher with a Midas. It's going to be a uh, fight mid here. I'm such a closest. I decided to TP because I would get there a little faster. And as I started TPing, I was like, did I really need to teleport there? Maybe I should have just walked. I wasn't quite sure. It's a frozen sigil though, guys. Now, I didn't save that guy, but like, I was there to do it almost. My mech unfortunately didn't catch the profit, but. If you ever want to lose less HP whenever you use a mist coil, just shield yourself first. Something I did in this case. But we did get a tower, so now we're one more tower up and a bit more advantage going to, going to our team. A lot more than we had before. The XP is a bit down again. Gold is stabilizing a lot more though. Our PA has more farm than our um, line now, which is very good. And I think we'll get two towers out of this. To Pierce. Profit Radiant's with the last hit. Tower has fallen. I saw Dyer's that I thought that might be happening. Because they did actually have a guy on the map. And then he just blew Bane up really hard. So that almost makes it worth it, actually. That was pretty nice. Again, just shield off the sleep. Maybe he was trying to set up for his allies. It looks like he actually, the Bane did have his ulti. I think he was waiting for his allies so that he could Fiend's Grip him, perhaps, but... Just shielded it off. Or what he should have done is waited until I shielded, and then he Fiend's Grip, because then it would prevent me from shielding off the Fiend's Grip, because that one's a lot more important. And with all these kills, we all buy a lot of items. This is really good for us. And I decided to make my next item purchase. I didn't really want to get a Force Staff, so instead I decided to get a Yule Scepter instead. So let me talk about Yule Scepter. As an item, it's very rarely used. Very rarely. Really depends on the hero. It's been buffed and buffed and buffed. It currently gives 40 movement speed, which is about equivalent to a boots on just about any hero. 
So the movement speed bonus is really nice, and that's actually really good for Abaddon because I need, always am going to be needing to move a lot. I need to run towards the allies. I need heals. I need to be running away from bad positions because mostly you're just a walking heal bot. You just kind of stand there and you heal constantly. I really didn't know where they were going to be, and this is why I shielded up a bit. Might as well. I've got lots of mana regen, so I can always put a shield on myself in case I end up getting initiated on. It's an extra 200 HP. So the other reason I wanted to grab a Yules is because I know they have a Weaver, and I wanted one other way to be able to disable or break a Lincolns. So, those are my reasons. That guy died really fast. I, I don't think he has any regen items just yet. I'm, I really don't think so. Or HP items. I think he pretty much just went Arcanes into Blink. Yeah. Arcane blink or arcane force with a with a bracer. That's no survivability. I can't keep that guy alive. Even if I would have healed him, he would have still died. Going on the pudge would have been good. I think our PA hesitated a bit here. I healed the wrong person there. I think. We can see the uh the weaver though. Should have attacked him a little earlier here. I guess we want to kill them anyways. I think he did a double MKB proc just Dyer's there. Middle tower is under a Radiance I think, top oh yeah, the PA just died twice, by the way, while we were chasing this Dyer's Weaver. Middle tower. Radiance top I use has fallen. Uh, the lift. Dyer's middle oh my god, is he gonna... Okay, he does end up dying. I really don't think DK wanted to use his finger on him, but he had to. They took our towers, by the way. Anyways. Oh yeah, the Prophet was taking our top, their top racks. That's when this happened. Okay. So pretty easy. At that point, I knew I was going to survive, very likely. Okay, that was the way he went. We weren't quite sure. I had the gem, but I was quite scared. Oh, I actually do have borrowed time, excuse me. So yeah, we got a Rax out of that. There was a fight with the, uh, the Prophet, did a nice job, and took the Rax in the meantime. I think the PA went pretty pretty hard YOLO. He bought back and he jumped right back in and fought again. He doesn't have a BKB, so I don't know. The guy really should have gotten a BKB this game. An armlet is okay for HP, but it's really not very good. Because anytime he jumps in against Invoker, or Tusk, or Pudge, or Bane, he'll just get magic nuked down and die repeatedly. So he definitely needed to go BKB this game. I would have BKB'd instead of the armlet, most likely. I think it would have been a lot better. You really do need magic community on that hero a lot of the times especially against a team that doesn't have hard carries oh, with the exception of weaver obviously but so we're starting to stabilize a lot more we still only lost one racks but we're actually equalized with them our exp is going closer and closer to zero and more importantly the gold graph is really dropping because we've been getting kill after kill after kill we only lost like four or five heroes we did have to buy back on uh phantom assassin Maybe have to isn't the right word because he still died a second time anyways without accomplishing anything, but um, a buyback was uh, was used, is the way we'll say it. I didn't really feel like my Yules was really super useful in the last fight, but it was, it was kind of okay. And now I kind of have to decide what to grab next, and my choice is going to be a Force Staff. I think Force Staff is, uh, is still very, very useful on this hero. So maybe next time, um, rather than having Yules, if I would have had a Force Staff, maybe I could have Force Staff the PA away from the Meteor or something like that, and then I wouldn't have even had to heal him, for example. It could have been an option or a choice that I could have made. And I still have the gem that I stole from them. I accidentally used my mech there. Whoops. But I just wanted to make sure there weren't any Ob Swords on the high ground, so I'm just looking for those now. If you have nothing else to do, if you're playing to support, just go look for wards. I, I had no idea why two of our heroes were here. I was really confused by that. Especially because we already took the racks there, but for some reason two of our heroes are there. And uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna turn out well, I promise. Oops, he looked like he got gripped. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, that was a grip. So I guess we're just gonna buy back and fight. Again, that's not a good that's not a good reason to buy back, by the way. Well, we got the punch to start things off, which is nice. I'm just gonna keep buffing and healing the PA. Leave us. 
We just got hella juked. Kind of. Wanted to force staff him to get him a little closer. Unfortunately, we we're not going to be able to kill the Weaver. So, we spent a lot of time fighting there, but I think we came out ahead. We did get a buyback on the line, but it's not Dyer's that big of a loss. Is under and attack. we will send the PA back. I can't believe the Weaver was still pushing mid like this. We were like, wait, why is Weaver there? Doesn't make a lot of sense. I was a little scared he'd be coming towards me, so I popped a shield on myself. The epic chase begins. That hex should secure the kill. So, Prophet shows up finally. I don't know how available he was to TP. We chased that guy for a really long time. We did chase him for a very long time, and he never TP'd until last second. I don't know if his map awareness is that great or what, but there I used my Yules, guys. Although my the extra movement speed honestly has been integral to a lot of situations. Maybe I didn't necessarily need to be there top, but it does help because it increases my allies' attack speed. If you guys don't know how his third skill works, it applies a slow, 20% movement speed slow, uh, possibly attack as well, Who to gain increase, no way, yeah, I'm not sure if it does attack and movement speed or just movement speed, what if I do hold alt while I look at the skill, I can't, guess I can't do that in, uh, in a replay, but um, it does give my allies 40 attack speed if they attack the same guy that I am, so Illusion. the extra attack speed is really nice. Uh, we can look at other items that we have. Our Prophet has a Deso, a Sheep, uh, a uh, Shadow Blade, and a Force Staff. He actually hasn't gotten Treads yet, which is a mistake. Um, you should almost always upgrade your boots, especially if you're playing Prophet, because, like, Prophet's honestly uh, very, very good. Uh, like, he's going to be right-clicking the whole game, and he doesn't need boots to travel, so you might as well upgrade the damn things. So, that is my feeling on the matter. Oh god, I should close this. Sorry, guys. I tried really hard to save that guy. I tried really hard. I <laughs> have a double force. It's always funny. I got so many misquote kills this fight. Does he have an X or is he just crazy? Uh, he does have an X, okay. So that's a 20 second cooldown, it's not that weird for him to ult creep. We win another fight, just barely. It's very close. Like, I threw so much on the PA, but I couldn't keep him alive, guys. If he had a BKB though, he would've been magic immune. I guess I can heal him then. I could still shield, I think. I think shield, you can go. But, uh, it's so hard. I mean, he's basically taking 100 rot damage per second, so that alone is really big. His items are really not that high. What it says, his net worth is fourth highest now, so. Buying back a couple times has really hurt him, and he's, he's still died quite a few times, I think. God, look at the KDAs. Lions on the top, baby. It's a 5, 8, and 6 PA. If he would have died like three times less, we would be stomping this game right now. It's, I'm not even kidding, really, like three times less. If he wouldn't have died after he bought back and he would have gotten a kill instead, he would maybe have another major item finished. I wonder if we have a net worth. I probably don't have a current gold on hotkeys. He's pretty low still, so in case you want to see CS, which absolutely doesn't matter anymore. So really, I just need to try to be around my allies at all times. Preferably the ones that are getting ganked. There's a, a yeah, the, the Prophet finally sold his Midas and he bought a Daedalus. Um, his damage is really good right now. If he had treads, he'd be attacking a lot faster. Like, honestly, oops, gotta fight. Alright, Tuskar is dead. Honestly, if he would have bought a might or a treads on profit, he would increase his damage by 30%. And he hits really hard right now. It really would have made a big difference. It's a big lift there. It's a dead punch. I really wanted to keep him up in the air if possible. 
That got killed immediately. I really gotta kill these bugs more often. I, I spent a lot of time running around. I was considering TPing here, but... Instead, I just used that 40 movement speed and ran for my life. So I got up. Okay, so... I have no idea where that was. I could hear it though. My problems with Prophet's build is first and foremost treads. He should have had treads. Uh, boot upgrades are by far some of the most cost efficient things in the entire game. Almost always. The ex even ignoring the stats alone, the 30 attack speed for an item slot alone is completely worth it. Like think about a hyperstone. A hyperstone gives you 50 attack speed and it costs 2000 gold. Previously used to cost 2100. So if you translate that to treads, 30 attack speed would have, would be something like 1400 gold. 1300 gold, 1200 gold, and he's only spending 950 on the upgrade. So it's completely worth upgrading. Plus he gets the extra HP and things like that. So treads upgrades should always be the case. You either buy treads or you buy phases, nature's profit. Ignoring that fact, he really needs a BKB. If he's doing a DPS role, he really needs a BKB. If he would have just had a BKB instead in some of these fights, it would have made the fights completely different. If, if the PA and the Prophet had him, like, it, the game could be very different. PA has followed up his item purchase with a Helm of the Dominator, by the way. Still doesn't have a BKB. So. Doesn't have very much attack speed either, which is another one of his problems. I, like, Abaddon is one of the worst counter pushers ever, as you guys can see. I can do like 200 AoE damage every 10 seconds. That was a hook. It was a bad hook, but it was a hook. And we should have another fight here. I told my team to wait until Profit was up. All we have to do is win a couple more team fights, and we will have a gold advantage eventually. Dyer's Beaver Lincolns is, is down. Attack. Now they're kind of just killing our base. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Pop my mech for him. He force staffed immediately and he's still gonna die. So, if he had a BKB there, could have gone a lot better. And our PA went really deep as well. Can't cover him over there. I think DK gave up. Yeah, he looks like he gave up there. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Don't believe this. This might be it for me, guys. JK is to sit for me. Is under attack. JK. JK, I'm so dead. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's ancient is under attack. Radiant victory. So, we lost. We lost, guys. Neither of our carries grabbed a Black King bar. Neither of them made particularly good decisions. And oh, the really nice roaming by the Bane put a lot of pressure on our mid hero, as well as our carry. So, I, I could have done better to save, try to save allies, but I don't think it would have mattered very much because our carries didn't really accomplish what they needed to do, which was not dying a lot. I mean, a 5, 10, and 6 PA, and his GPM was only 429, for God's sake. Even Prophet did a lot better than that with 8, 6, and 21. So. We need a better item choices out of a lot of our heroes, and we didn't get it. And we also need a lot better decision making in team fights, so we ended up losing that game because of it. But anyways, this is a good demonstration of how to play a Abaddon. You just try to save your allies when they do crazy shit, and uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And um, maybe I should have gotten a different item than my Yules. Maybe I should have gone for us immediately. I probably would have been a better choice because I could save. I could better save people that are really in trouble. Like heals are good. 450 heals is good, but it's not good enough to get to save somebody that's way out of position and not going to get out of position without a force so i should have adjusted my build i probably shouldn't have gone yules even though yules was occasionally useful so all right that's it it's in a batting game i hope you guys enjoy uh i'm gonna try to play a bunch of ember or earth spirit earth bro tonight uh i still haven't done it because i'm afraid that's honestly it i'm afraid to play the hero he's too good he's too hard his skill cap is huge i'm scared to play him but i'll do it eventually and then i'll have a nice video for you guys hopefully in less than three months uh, I think that's it. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.